Hallelujah. Praise God. I welcome you back to Spiritful Podcast. And I want to thank you for joining this evening. Today, quickly, I'm going to be talking about pride. Pride. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, it says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Child of God, when the devil wants to destroy a man, he takes his time. You know, sometimes I feel we think the devil does things in a hurry. No, that's not his style. Don't forget that he is a spirit. And he has all the time of the he has all the time in the world. He doesn't die. The devil could take 10 years to plot the downfall of a man. And the Bible is telling us now in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, that pride goes before destruction. So God is showing us that pride is the first symptom you begin to sense when destruction is coming for you. When you see a man that has been marked for destruction, pride is a symptom. So the first thing you see in that man's life is that pride begins to well up for no reason. He wouldn't know that the devil is already planning his downfall. And the Bible says a haughty spirit, an arrogant spirit before a fall. People think being arrogant, being haughty, being prideful is a way to carry yourself. But no, it's the spirit. And the Bible is telling us through that scripture that that's what goes first before destruction. When the devil has marked a man for destruction, he first of all sends the spirit of pride into that man because he knows that once pride gains ascendancy in that man's life, even God cannot help him. Because the Bible says that God resists the proud. He doesn't give them listening ears. He resists them. So when the devil wants to cut your communication line, wants to remove you from the coverings of God, what he does is that he sends pride into your heart, which will now in turn cause God to resist you. And when God resists you, it means you are out of protection. And then the devil can strike. So that's why the scripture says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before you fall. Once you see any man that is full of pride, you can tell what the end of that man will become. In no time, he's going to be destroyed. When you see a man that is arrogant, you can tell what the end or the future of that man holds. It is definitely falling. He is going to fall. He is going to fall. So, child of God, when we begin to sense pride in our life, we must fight it with all diligence. Listen, we don't only go to warfare against the devil. We don't only go to warfare against demons. There are times that we go on warfare against our own flesh. Because I believe that a man's flesh is his first enemy before the devil. Because it is your flesh that the devil passes through to cause you to sin. It is your flesh. So a man's flesh is his first enemy. So we must go to war with our flesh. He said if you live after the flesh, you will die. You see that? So the flesh is a death trap. And the Bible says if you live according to the dictates of this flesh, that you will die. So our first warfare is against the flesh. So the the scripture advises us to crucify the flesh, to put it to death, to kill the flesh and its desires. Because the flesh wants to kill you. So it's either it kills you first or you kill it first. So your number one enemy is not the devil. It's your flesh before the devil. Because if you were not in this flesh in the first place, the devil has no power over you. 
So the scriptures advises us to live by the Spirit. To live by the Spirit. So the, the moment you begin to sense pride in your life, child of God, it is danger coming. You must give yourself to prayer and fasting. Even call a brother. Speak to a brother. Speak to the Lord. Let him know that, Lord, I'm beginning to sense pride in my life. We know when we are becoming prideful. We know. We know because I've been there. There are times that I just noticed that, okay, I'm beginning to act a certain way. The Holy Spirit will, will, will tell you. You see, that's part of the reason why the Holy Ghost is in us. He will help you detect things quickly so that you can nip it in the butt before it grows. You can cut it off. So that's one of the, 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 the ministry of the Holy Ghost. He will help us to detect these things that are growing in our lives. You will know. You, you, you can figure it out that I'm acting differently. Something is happening in my life. I begin to become prideful so that you will quickly get it out of the way because the end product of pride is destruction and the end product of a haughty spirit is a fall. So this should be a part of our prayer point. That Lord, keep me humble. We know how it goes. The Bible says the Lord resists the proud and it gives grace to the humble. So a man that is humble does not pray for grace. Grace is automatically supplied to that man because he is humble. Jesus said, learn of me. I am meek and I am lowly. This is the character of our God. And the Bible says that we should be like him. That's what we are aspiring for. To grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ. That's what we are aspiring for. And Jesus described himself. He said, I am meek and lowly. So pride is an issue. We saw many people that God brought down because they were proud. For example, look at Nebuchadnezzar. God gave him power to become king of the world. His country, Babylon, was a civilization of the day. There was no nation that Nebuchadnezzar went to war with that he didn't conquer. Even God gave Israel to him. Israel was given to Nebuchadnezzar. You see that? But he became so big in his own eyes and pride crept in to the extent that he made a golden statue of himself and told everybody to worship Ahmadi Cross Kabbalah. You see, the Bible says God is a jealous God. God does not take lightly idolatry. He will say it repeatedly in, in his words. Thou shalt not save another God. Most of the times that the children of Israel were sold into slavery by the Lord is because they started serving other gods. They went a whoring after other gods. Started serving Baal, building high groves, building, building carved image, serving other gods. And God became jealous, became angry with them and he gave them up to slavery. So that was one of the things they did. That's why they were sold to, 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 to Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar became so big in his own eyes and he created a golden statue. It was a big statue, not a silver statue, not golden because it was, it was actually made of gold. Created a golden statue of himself and asked everybody to bow to it. At that time, he didn't know that pride had crept in. And because of that, he did. The same God that gave him the power. What did the Bible say happened in Nebuchadnezzar? God made him an animal for seven years to live in the forest with animals. He became like a beast until he became humble and recognized God as king of the world. That was when God restored him and gave him his throne back. The scripture, the scripture says that things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of scriptures, might have hope. Every story written in the scripture is for our learning. So, the story of Nebuchadnezzar was not written there to occupy space. God allowed it to be canonized in the Bible so that we can learn from that story. That no matter how far God has brought you, do not allow pride gain entrance into your heart. Because when pride goes, what comes next is destruction. There are some of us today that God has given grace to play key roles in the church. Maybe you, God has blessed you with finances. So you, you, you partner with the church, you finance the church. Maybe you are an instrumentalist, you are a keyboardist, maybe you are a singer. And, and you don't know that pride is beginning to well up in your heart. You're like, oh, without me, they cannot do. Without me, they cannot do. Without me, they cannot do. You will be shocked. You will be shocked what God will do to you. Because pride goes before destruction. There are many of us like that today. 
You play a key role in the church and you're thinking, oh God, they cannot do without me. They cannot do it. But your destruction is at hand. The devil is fighting you and you don't even know it. The devil is fighting you. And he's fighting you so bad that even when you run to God, the Bible says God will resist you. You know, you can be fighting warfare. The devil can be dealing with you. The devil can be fighting with you. And you run to God and God will save you because he's a savior. That's what he does. But when you fall into the hands of God, who can deliver you? Imagine the devil is chasing you. Then you come to God and God resists you. Who will save you? That's what pride does. When a man has come into pride, you have no hope because God himself will resist you. And people just think pride is all about being arrogant. Jesus told us of a parable of two men that went to pray. He said that one came there and he was praying that, Oh Lord, I thank you that I'm not, I'm not like these guys who are thieves, fornicators, murderers. I thank you. He was praising himself. He was praising himself. The Bible says another man came who could not even lift his head up to heaven, but fell down on his face and said, Lord, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. Jesus said, the first man that came to pray, which is the, he was even a Pharisee. He was a teacher of the law. He was a pastor in our day. He said, that man came and he was bragging. I'm not like other people that sin, that fornicate, that do all this. He said, that man was resisted. He said, but the tax collector, which is like the sinner, the sinner guy, came, humbled himself, could not even look up to heaven, fell on the ground, and began to ask God for mercy. Jesus said, that man went home blessed. But the, 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 the Pharisee, the pastor, went home with resistance. God resisted him because he was proud. So, we need the help of God to be able to know what pride is. Because pride is not all about being haughty at times. Sometimes, even in your prayer, God can smell pride. Even in your prayer. Even in the way you talk, the way you communicate, God can smell pride. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Some people, when they talk, you feel as if, oh, they have so much strength. Oh, me, I don't, one hour prayer is too cheap. I do 19 hours. You feel as if maybe they pray by their strength. Paul, Paul, was, Paul was very careful to say, I am what I am by the grace of God. You, you could be telling people, oh, I pray for 19 hours and you are in pride. You don't know. And before you know, God will resist you. The next time you are not able to pray for five minutes. Because everything we are, everything we do, we do by the grace of God. So you might be in church. God has put you in a key position. My darling brother and sister, please make sure you serve diligently. Do not allow pride or arrogance come into your life because according to the scripture in Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18, it said pride is the first symptom to destruction. Then the haughty spirit goes before it fall. We saw what happened to the devil. He was the light bearer in heaven. God, God gave him a special position. He thought he was special. He became too much. And before you know, pride came into him and he wanted to lift up his throne above the throne of God. And what happened to him? He was casted down. Jesus said, I behead Satan fall as lightning. A haughty spirit before he fall. So he fell. He fell. And today he has lost his place forever. No more mercy. So I want to advise you, child of God, there are other examples I would have given, but no, I want to make this video very short. So I want to counsel you, child of God, please be careful to know when pride is creeping into your life. One of the things that prayer helps us to do, he, 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 prayer helps us become humble because you cannot be relating with God constantly and be prideful. No. As you are relating with God, his nature and his character will start rubbing off on you. Jesus said, I am meek and I am lowly. One of the ways to know a man that has been with God is that he becomes humble. The Bible testified of Moses. He said he was the meekest man alive. And that was the same Moses that saw God, that saw the back of God. He said he was the meekest man alive. That's what the presence of God does to you. It makes you humble. Pride is a symptom that you have not intimated with God. If you intimate with God, pride will die. He said to Moses, you cannot see me and live. That's what happened to him. He became meek. When you see God, flesh dies. So my dear brother, fight pride with all your life. You don't, you don't even know you might be proud in your marriage. You might be proud. You might be exhibiting pride to your wife and you don't know. Oh, the devil is corny, guys. He's deceptive. Listen, the devil is not as powerful as he is deceptive. He is corny. 
The Bible says we are not ignorant of his wiles, of his devices. That's what he does. He's a corny guy. So you might, you might be exhibiting pride to your wife at home. You don't know. Even you as a wife, you might be exhibiting pride to your husband at home. You don't know. It takes the Holy Ghost to tell you, hey, daughter, hey, son, you are going the way of destruction. That's why we must stay with God. Read the scriptures. Pray. So that as we interact with God, God will be able to tell us those things that are happening in our lives that even we don't know. So that we can, through prayer, get rid of those things. Thank you so much for your time, for watching today. And I pray for you that God will help you. That God will help you to be humble. That pride will not find a place in your life. That pride will not find a place in the life of your husband and your children. That God will give you grace to be humble, to be meek and lowly like our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Until I come your way again next week, thank you and God bless you. Bye for now.